Here is a quote from B.B. King. The beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. And this is for teachers. All right. Helping Hands, the Bureau for At-Risk Youth, 1-800-99-YOUTH. They have this flyer. It says, Remember, making good decisions takes practice. And while there are no guarantees that the choice you make will be successful, following the target targeted steps on this card will help you and your children better navigate your way through the important decision-making process. All right. How do you make good choices? One way that I know I've made a good choice is by how I feel because I have a conscience. Your conscience can tell you that you're doing something wrong or that you're doing something right. For instance, one time I did something wrong when I was Baker acted the second time. On the first time I had been cold for two days and finally one guard saw me and gave me a, a sweater. I was there seven and a half days. The second time, I didn't count the time because there's nothing to do there. So like, uh, it's like when the clock is not moving, don't look at your watch to say, is it time to go home yet? Oh man, I got another five hours to go, you know. So I don't, I don't pay attention to time anyway. I don't wear a watch. I haven't worn one since I was 16 and I went to Honduras and I had a calculator watch. And my friends told me that for that calculator watch, a man could chop off my arm just so he could get it and sell it. And so I stopped wearing watches back then. A calculator watch, look up a calculator watch if you don't know what it is. It had the little numbers and you had to punch it in and they were so small. It was it was all right, but you could just memorize the multiplication tables. It's easier. <laughs> or not. So I was telling you about how to make a good choice. Your conscience will tell you. So the second time I was Baker acted, I was grabbing, I, a young man was shivering and he was, <laughs> and it was lunchtime. So I told him, let's go over here and ask the guard for a sweater. And the guard said, hey. Because he was busy watching the people eat, making sure they don't choke or attack each other. And so what I ended up doing was, waiting then we went to ask another guard and they said we don't have any right now I mean <laughs> sometimes people are busy and they don't care about what you need but at the same time I was wearing a, a sweater all right the second time that I was Baker acted and I did feel God asking me to take it off because I had been warm and to give it to this man but I didn't do it I didn't do it and I know my son would have done it because my son even since he was two years old or three he used to go ah and I used to pick him up and then he would grab on top of the fridge the cookie jar plastic and then he would take out a cookie and give it to me I showed him how to take the lid off. And then he would take out another one and bite it for himself. I didn't teach him this. And to this day, he does that stuff. Like, well, it's usually with cookies or crackers. 
he is a giving person. People are different. I remember my daughter when she was about three years old. I was eating, sitting down at the table with her, and she grabbed something from my plate. And nobody had ever grabbed anything from my plate. I was in shock. Back then I loved her very much uh, because it was easy. I would call her on the phone, I would dance with her, I would do a thousand things. But now she's got the the distancer. Well basically what happens is uh, they become teenagers and they become different. So she'll come around again and be nice to me. Or maybe even like the daughter of my spouse, my first spouse, first wife. She said, you know what? Danny was a very good person. Because I didn't rape her, I didn't say mean things to her. Well, I basically didn't talk to her because she used to be a pain. <laughs> whiny. A whiny voice or baby voice. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't I just remembered that I picked a second shift so I wouldn't be home with her alone and basically I didn't want to be home with her now I'm thinking well she's only seven years younger than me so if I'm 40 she's 33 right yeah I think she's a doctor or almost a doctor or a doctor. Either way she earns good money I heard. Which is wonderful. Everybody should be. However I, I had a hard time relating with her. I guess she saw me as the man that took, his mo took her mother from her father. Adultery would have been it would have been the name of that I think but again when people are abusive to you not that he would hit her I'm he was a better man than I am just he didn't work <laughs> he would I'm not gonna mention his name I almost did he was just like me as far as like very polite we're from a different era I mean, I'm younger, but the thing is, I could say he's a holy man. Maybe I look like a holy man to some people. I always wanted to tell or make a video about this. When I was 18, maybe 17, I was in high school and I went to visit this priest that had a converted a convent into a home for college students but he gave me a heart attack when he told me I had to cook for them if I lived there as far as like I don't know how to cook anything and he said doesn't matter you will learn we will all eat whatever you cook so he said one time we had to eat cereal because nobody else knew the other guys didn't know how to cook but what he didn't tell me is that we will teach you and cooking just sent me like into a heart attack panic because I didn't know how to cook and what what the mental block that I had with cooking and I still do I'm trying to not repeat it for the for my children well they love cooking um, I didn't make jello until I was 35 with my daughter what happened was uh, my mother was very possessive don't touch my cookware. Yes, ma'am. Don't touch her cook her pots and pans. And so what happened was I developed a block. I just don't touch him. And grandpa told me also 
that when he was a kid they told him men don't go into the kitchen que quiere what do you want stand over there and tell me what do you want you want a glass of milk yes please all right there you go but he was not allowed to be in the kitchen and later he told me that one job he could never do was sell vegetables because he could not keep track of the tomatoes went up five cents or down ten cents uh, that would have been a panic that's one job he said I'll go to war but I won't be able to sell tomatoes or vegetables and so I did try to be a cashier and I flunked out because I in my mind I had I knew what a tomato was and then when I became a cashier I found out they had like five types of tomatoes the little ones the big ones so many of them and I loved it when they were in a bag that had I could just scan it but I lasted two weeks and I never that was the training period and I never took off because some things like my daughter she goes shopping every weekend with my spouse by the time she's 18 20 20 I was I was 22 23 and I had never gone shopping I mean <laughs> so like I mean if I had bought milk I had bought the cigarettes for my mother but I had never bought I had never bought uh, I didn't know what lettuce and, and cabbage were you know I didn't know the difference uh, I had one girlfriend that didn't know how to cook and I bought some it looked like a stick it was <laughs> it was yucca a relative of the yucca a cousin of the yucca and we never cooked it because I didn't know that we could boil it I didn't know we had to peel it I didn't know anything about it so we suffered we suffered she's the one that told me don't teach good manners to our children our future children we never had them but she had endometriosis which means painful sex um, she had a problem and I tried for two years I think I was trying to have children with her but I, uh, I don't know what happened and back then I didn't know if I was the one with problems or her I knew she had the endometriosis so what happened was she didn't know how to cook and she told me don't teach our children good manners in Spanish like usted buenos dias none of that because our children you're so nice Daniel she knew I was a dove I just learned the word dove and she was a dove and she said they will eat our children because with all the Spanish cultures in Miami it was very few people now I didn't have this, this rapid speech in Spanish because I had to think what I wanted to say but what happened was nobody spoke I'll say respectful Spanish some would say que tu quieres whereas I would say may I help you or in Spanish que desea como le puedo ayudar I would be too polite and so my children have noticed that they discovered it they said Daniel you didn't teach me this way and grandma's saying this way then I told them I told them what I had done with them I didn't teach you to be respectful because you don't have to respect you will get offended is what I mean you will get offended when people tell you tu que quieres like uh, the English in the United States we use the word 
what <laughs> what I mean there is just the maybe the tone there's a there's a way to put it so that it's not so ugly what Daniel what now other people say more educated they would or myself I would say yes in French I said hello to one person and he answered we oui? like yes <laughs> so well even in movies I heard about how the United States bastardized English doesn't matter what I want is my children to be successful and being polite is good however being offended at every single person that speaks to you is not good so that's why I don't speak to anybody <laughs> I speak to you through this video uh, most likely if you're still listening you're a you're a person that understands me and you're saying wow that's happened to me or how can I prevent that from happening to me take care of yourself be better than I am